for every work of art on paper that survives today intact or relatively intact, it's hard to estimate, but there are probably many, many more um, works on paper that didn't survive. Our department cares for the collections of drawings, manuscripts, and photographs. I personally am a conservator of photographs. The conservation of drawings, manuscripts, and photographs is grouped together because they all have physically similar types of objects. These three collections and the materials that compose them share a common vulnerability to the environment. They are all readily reactive to changes in relative humidity and tend to be light sensitive. This is a gelatin silver print by August Sonder dating from 1928. When it came into our collection, there were numerous losses scattered throughout the image. The gelatin binder apparently had been exposed to light over prolonged periods of time, possibly on display. When this happens, gelatin will first begin to lift away from its paper support and uh, then flake away, resulting in losses. We change our displays of works of art on paper every 12 weeks. We do this to limit their exposure to light. You'll find that the galleries in the museum are lit significantly low in the drawings, manuscripts, and photo galleries, uh, significantly lower than the other areas such as sculpture and painting, and that is also to limit their exposure to light. These are two German illuminated manuscripts from the 15th century. They provide an interesting comparison. Uh, originally, both of these albums had clasps uh, which held the album tightly together. At some point in its life, the clasps were lost on this album, uh, which opened it up to the environment. Alternate changes in relative humidity um, caused the individual sheets of parchment to expand and contract. And as a result, uh, the album we have today is wedge-shaped. Uh, because of all the, the bulges and cockling in each individual sheet of parchment in the manuscript. This red chalk drawing by Giulio Romano, uh, entitled The Sacrifice of Isaac from the early 16th century, came into our collection a victim of insect infestation. There were numerous small worm holes uh, scattered throughout the paper support. A restorer had well-meaningly placed small squares of paper in behind each wormhole, which had resulted in numerous bulges throughout the paper. Our drawings conservator, Nancy Yako, was able with controlled applications of moisture to remove the drawing from its collector's mount and then remove each individual uh, patch repair behind the wormholes. Uh, with those gone, she was able then to fill in the losses in each wormhole with paper pulp. Once that was done, that paper was toned to be compatible with the color of the surrounding areas in the image. Particulate pollutants, and I'm talking about dirt, airborne grime, and dust, can also have uh, harmful effects of works of art on paper. An example of an artwork which had a problem with airborne dust and dirt is David Hockney's Pear Blossom Highway. This is a collage composed of about 750 snapshot uh, chromogenic prints uh, assembled on one panel. And this particular adhesive he used was very stable, but it's a tacky adhesive. Airborne dust has found its way into contact with that tacky adhesive which remains on the surface. Now, when Pear Blossom Highway came into the museum, there were several small black patches scattered over the surface of the collage. We used special erasers to remove this uh, tacky adhesive from the collage. This was a fairly long treatment which our entire department took part in. Once all those areas were gone, uh, the whole collage read better overall. And when you looked at the collage, your eye didn't go straight to these uh, small black areas uh, of discoloration.